So a friend asked um, how I edit photos or what my process is in Photoshop for editing uh, photographs I take while rail fanning. Um, so I'm just going to go over um, this process really quick. Um, just, I hope everybody understands that this is my process. It may not necessarily be the correct process or the best process, but this is uh, these are my methods how to do them. Um, I did study um, uh, Adobe Media in college, um, so some of these methods I learned um, actually taking university classes in uh, digital media, um, others just through internet tutorials. Um, so basically we have this photograph here of Denver and Rio Grande 425 um, near Antonito, Colorado, and this one I picked because it's kind of difficult. Um, um, the lighting, the shadow, I mean, we have these clouds here that are very dark, leaving the landscape dark, but then we have these lighter areas here. So the challenge is, is to be able to draw out the train or the subject of the picture um, while maintaining this dramatic atmosphere of the storm clouds that are coming in. Um, so right now I have the photograph open in camera raw um, in Photoshop 2021. Um, so do some basic adjustments here. You don't want to do all of your adjustments in the raw interface. Just uh, just the basics um, to make the make the light differences pop, and then we'll do other things once we open it in Photoshop Shop itself. Um, so increase the exposure a little bit. Obviously, that blows out the clouds here. Um, Dehaze. Um, tightens up the shadows a little bit. Um, may want to bump up the shadows slightly, but that may be undone by a step it will take in a little bit. Um, now the nice thing about RAW is that all the color data here, even though it blew it out to us right now, it's still present in the file, so we will um, change that in the future. Now, there is a method that you can use um, to only adjust colors around the train, leaving the clouds dark like that, um, using the radio filter here. Um, problem is, is that that only allows you to adjust a circular area within the photograph, and you don't have a lot of fine control of the areas outside of it. So because this area over here was already blown out, um, we won't worry about the radial filter. We'll do adjustment filters later on. So I'll just open the file. All right, so here's the picture. Um, the first adjustment that we need to do is brightness and contrast to uh, fix the sky here. So I'll drop that down. Um, then obviously that did alter the entire picture, but we have a uh, mask here. So click on the mask, and then use the brush tool. Make sure it's set to black, and we're going to paint a mask over this filter um, here where we want the light to be a little bit brighter. Obviously the train itself, that's about 2,000 pixels, is too big. You're down to 511. And we're just masking off the areas that we don't want it, we didn't want to be darkened. Increase that a little bit to see what this looks like. No, I don't like that, so we'll undo it. All right. Um, that basically solved our cloud issue. Um, make some adjustments to the color. Um, you can do saturation adjustments in the camera raw. I prefer, if I'm going to do that, that I'll use a filter here because it gives a little bit more control. Um, sometimes vibrance and saturation together work very well, sometimes they don't. This is all just trial and error, so play around with these sliders until you find something you like. Um, and then often with difficult lighting like this, 
an interesting trick to do. It's kind of complex. It may not be your cup of tea, but um, I kind of like it. It's a trick often used for with uh, by portrait photographers who do outdoor portraits. Um, so duplicate the base layer. Um, going to add a blur, Gaussian blur. Now about four or five pixels is good. Um, that's the commonly recommended number in other tutorials that I've seen. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to change the blend mode here to soft light. Now I won't go into detail about what that does, and right now it looks pretty ugly. Um, so we are going to drop the opacity of this layer. And usually I end up doing between 10 and 20%. And what that does is it uh, basically... Um, pops the shadows and the and the light areas at the same time so it gives you a bit more contrast I think it's a better effect than using the brightness contrast or the contrast slider on the brightness contrast um, filter um, so you can kind of see the difference there now the problem with steam locomotives though is that they are very dark so when I add this filter it does darken up the locomotive a little bit too much for my liking. It works best with landscapes, so the area around the train. Um, but because of that, I will add a, another mask. And then we're going to paint the mask over the locomotive, which will just brighten that up a little bit and bring it back to the forefront of our attention. See, the train may need a little bit of that as well, passenger cars. All right, and another thing to check for is chromatic aberration, um, which you can see a little bit of it here on the running boards where the extreme white of the imitation aluminum of the running board contrasts with the black of the boiler. Um, it's these blue and reddish yellow orange um, hazes around these areas. It's not too noticeable in this photograph. I mean, you can definitely see it here in the Pullman coach in the back. So what we'll do to fix that is we'll duplicate this layer. Since this one already has the blur on it, the blur is key for this one. Um, and then we'll change this one to color. The blend mode on this one to color. Um, blur on that did not do much, so we will blur it some more. And um, again, like with a lot of these methods, it is all. Um, trial and error trying to find the best method. Oh, um, the reason why is because the opacity was sent to 11% because I had duplicated that layer. Um, you notice when I increase the opacity to 100%, suddenly that chromatic aberration is gone. Um, unfortunately, in many pictures, oh, um, chromatic aberration is too strong for this method to work. And you can see it here on the fringes, there is still a little bit of a green tinge around the conductor. Um, and it does have a side effect. It won't work on the entire picture. We'll see the number 425 here. Um, the blur, while it did remo remove the chromatic aberration around the um, tender sill, it actually blurred the number a little bit. So we are also going to do a uh, mask on this one. And we'll just paint around the number there, and the number here, or the letter or row name there. Um, so another side effect of removing chromatic aberration in this method is it can also um, desaturate some aspects of the picture. So I'll mask the number plate here since it's bright red. Um, 
and that looks fairly good. And then we'll crop the picture. Make sure the horizon's level. Um, it is kind of difficult in these mountain pictures to find the horizon because obviously we have uneven hills and mountains behind it. Um, so just, again, trial and error, figure out what looks best. Um, often the cars themselves can be used um, to determine it, but be warned that trains often lean, so they're not always going to be standing straight up. All right, um, probably should have done this before, but it does take a while for it to render the sharpen. So sharpen the background layer, the, uh, the original photograph. Um, and honestly, I think the we could use another adjustment layer for train, bring up the brightness a little bit more in the foreground. Now you don't want to make this too strong of an effect, obviously, because then it kind of ruins the cloudy atmosphere. But unfortunately, cameras are not able to record the same uh, dynamic range of light as your eyes. So we are required to do this kind of thing to, to adjust the photograph to better match what I saw in real life when I saw it. Obviously, my eyes adjusted to the soft dark light of these storm clouds and I could see the train a lot brighter um, than what the photograph recorded. Um, probably overdid that a little bit too much so we'll drop it to 30. And that should be perfect, at least to my eye. And then we get pesky details in the photos that we don't want, like this photographer who was writing in, <laughs> um, it's actually pretty funny, he was writing a hoverboard through this dirt road in the middle of the mountains, middle of the desert, um, as he was chasing the train. So just use the clone stamp, and we'll pick some sagebrush in the near vicinity. And honestly, this should have been done um, at the beginning before we start editing. So what I'm going to do is duplicate these layers so we don't lose our um, editability. And then I'm going to merge the duplicates to combine all of the effects together. And now just paint over this gentleman here. Oops. Make sure that these geographic lines match, and now he's gone. Um, so that's the basic process. It takes me about five minutes for a photo for something difficult like this. Other photos, like if it's strict sunlight, obviously, I can just do all the edits that I need in the camera raw. No problem. It takes about a minute. Um, but this one required a little bit more effort to uh, make sure that the train and the clouds and everything aren't too dark or too light. Um, but yeah, this is my basic editing process for Railfan photos. Uh, hopefully there's some things that you can use. Um, and if there's better options, obviously uh, experiment with those. Um, like I said, this is my method. It may not be the best. It may not be something that works for you. Um, but it tends to work for me. So that's what I use.